Hello, my name is Michelle Travis. I'm the nurse coordinator for the Syosset Hospital Bariatric Program. This is an exciting time for you, and we are here for you every step of the way. At this time, you should have completed most or all of your checklist requirements, and you should have also have a scheduled surgery date. Today, we are going to review the preoperative education module. This education module will go over information regarding what is required before surgery, what to expect during your hospitalization, and what to expect when you are at home recovering. Remember, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to call the office at any time. Okay, so first we're gonna start off with the most important thing is the bariatric office telephone number. It is written on the slide and you should be able to, at any point in time, if you have any questions, concerns, before, after your surgery, please call the office. We have our surgeons are on call 24 seven, and you can always be able to reach someone. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna look over the nutrition education, then we're gonna go over the pre-op process, the intra-op process, post-operative expectations, home care, how do you care for yourself at home, and support and follow-up. Be sure to review in detail the pre-op and post-op packets that were provided to you during your nutrition appointment. If you don't have a copy, make sure you let us know so that we could either email you one or if you happen to come into the office when applicable, we can give you a packet. These packets are very important. They will tell you how to uh, before your surgery, what to do, what to drink, what to eat, and what to do after your surgery, what to eat and what to drink, and for when and the time period. Vitamins. So vitamin and mineral supplementation. Your surgeon will give you the okay to when to begin taking your vitamins and minerals. Continue vitamin and mineral supplementation as directed for life. It's important that you get all the vitamins you need and when you come in for your office visits, we do do blood tests at certain times just to make sure that your vitamins and minerals are up to date. Liquid or chewable are the best and tolerated. No gummies. Gummies are not good for right now. They're missing a key vitamin and we would rather you not use any gummies. Some varieties of bariatric vitamins are complete and should be uh, used and you don't need to have uh, other supplements for that. Ones that we use at the office are the Bariatric Fusion. We recommend them. They're a complete chewable vitamin and you won't have to take any extras. If you have any questions, you can always reach us, talk to us about the vitamins, and you can also uh, speak to our nutritionist regarding it. So, pre-up. Two weeks. For some two weeks, maybe one week for others, it depends on what your surgeon tells you. Two out of your three meals will be a meal replacement protein shake. The one meal that you would have, regardless of time of day, some people like to have that one meal at the end of the day, needs to be a lean and green. So what does it mean by a lean and green? Four to eight ounces of a lean protein. Could be a fish, could be chicken, could be turkey and unlimited non-starchy vegetable. A non-starchy vegetable um, would be like green beans and uh, broccoli, but not rice or potatoes. Those are considered starchy. The day before surgery, so clear liquids, clear broth, water, it can be infused with the fruit, but don't eat the fruit, uh, clear diluted fruit juice, apple, white grape, white grandparry, cranberry, uh, decaffeinated tea, coffee, no milk added, and you can have jello, uh, clear popsicles, Italian ices, and two protein drinks, okay? Um, we don't want to have any food that day because we, when we do the surgery the next day, you don't want to have bits and pieces when they're doing the surgery. Uh, two weeks post-surgery, clear liquids for the first stage, that would be kind of in the hospital. The first day you'll have like ice chips and little bit tiny sips. Um, the second day in the hospital, they'll do full liquids. So that would be a jello, that could be um, ices. And then when you go home, 
you'll do for about two weeks um, of protein shakes. You can have broths. You can have um, smooth, liquidy yogurt. Um, and those are the things that you can do um, for your first two weeks. Again, we'll be here to answer any questions and we'll talk to you when you're in your hospital more about what to have when you go home. All right, so for most patients, you need to be 100% compliant with this modified liquid diet for two weeks prior to your surgical date. If you're a diabetic, make sure you discuss your post-op diabetic medication uh, plan with your uh, primary care doctor or endocrinologist. Have your primary MD change any extended release medications um, that cannot be crushed. Those are usually an ER, a CR, and SR. And the reason why we say that is for right after the surgery, you have to have medications have to be smaller than a Tic Tac, okay? A Tic Tac or smaller. Anything larger has to be crushed. Um, that's why extended release are not made to be crushed, so therefore they would have to be changed to ones that can be. Um, make sure that you have your bariatric um, protein shakes, your liquids. Make sure if you, you have Tylenol, liquid Tylenol works best. Um, any vitamins and uh, things that can be crushed in your home um, so that you're all prepared when you come home after surgery. And also make sure you plan to have someone stay with you for two to three days after surgery. So pre-surgical testing. So at pre-surgical testing, you will receive a uh, bottled wash. It is, um, it, it's used the day before surgery or follow the instructions of what they give you at pre-surgical testing. It may be the morning of. So you're gonna take a shower, you're going to use that bottle of, it's like a soapy kind of material, and you're just gonna wash your upper area and here. It's not for your face, it's not for your hair. Um, it's used to kind of decrease the bacteria um, that we have, all have on our bodies. Do not rub it on your body, because that can cause like scratches and things. It's just to wash under um, your abdomen and this area here. Um, it is slippery, so be careful when you do use it, and um, just just be care cautious with that. For day before surgery, you'll be notified. Um, they're going to call you from pre-op somewhere between four and eight p.m., and they'll tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. If your surgery is scheduled for a Monday, you will probably receive this call on a Friday. So please be on time check in at the front desk. They're going to take you upstairs to the third floor. All surgery takes place on the third floor. That is the pre-op area, the uh, operating rooms, and recovery room area. Please, no jewelry. That includes rings, earrings, watches, metal piercing, any piercings. If you have metal piercings, go to a tattoo place. They can put these plastic spacers in and they can uh, then, uh, you can always put them in after when you go home. If you have a CPAP machine, you don't need to bring it with you. We have CPAP machines here at the hospital, and um, they also have um, the tubing and the masks. They're only single use for you. You can even take it home. But if you wish to bring your own, they have to be really clean. But at this time, we would prefer you don't bring your CPAP machine and don't bring um, your mask and tubing. We will provide all of that. Um, bring a list of your medications, allergies, bring your ID picture, bring your insurance card and your healthcare proxy if you have one. Do not wear contact uh, lenses, wear glasses. Uh, no smoking or nicotine products and no makeup or nail polish. Now I know a lot of you get uh, asking about why no nail polish. Well, and also no fake nails. We use a thing called a pulse oximeter. It measures your oxygenation during the um, uh, surgery and afterwards in the hospital. And sometimes certain polishes and fake nails can affect the, um, how we're reading that uh, oxygenation. So, especially red nail polish. So if you could avoid and keep your nails clear, that would be best. 
um, in the holding room. So that's the pre-op area. This is where you're going to meet the surgeon, you're going to meet the anesthesiologist, you're going to meet a nurse, um, you're going to be given a gown, they're going to give you an ID bracelet, that's going to stay on for the rest of the whole um, hospitalization. Your IV will be started, you'll get a consent, they'll give you these sequential stockings, these are put on your legs, and what they do is they hook them up to a pump, and they're going to inflate and keep your circulation in your legs going throughout the procedure and when you're ever laying in bed. This is to decrease the chances of blood clots and things like that, so everybody gets one. Um, the nurse will take a medical history, like you had in pre-surgical testing. It's just they have to see if there were any changes. And please, if you have any dentures or glasses or hearing aids, they'll ask you to remove them. They will keep them for you, so when you go back into recovery after the surgery, they will give them back to you. Operating room. So in the operating room, you're, they're going to bring you in, wheel you in. You probably won't remember it because they give a little bit of medication and pre-op. So when you go into the operating room, it's going to be sedation and you'll get uh, general anesthesia. They'll give a warming blanket, monitoring your vital signs, so you'll have a lot of stickies on you and these um, different pads. Um, the surgeon, the surgical assistant, the anesthesiologist, two to three nurses will be in the room, and they'll do the surgery. So afterwards, when the surgery is done, the surgeon will speak to your family. Okay, so recovery. You'll wake up in the recovery room, you may have a sore throat, nausea, little pain. The sore throat um, is probably from the breathing tube, but that will be only minimal. Uh, you'll have uh, nasal oxygen, IV fluids, ice packs. You'll have the sequentials, and you'll have five Steri-Strip bandages. They're about this big, small, and they'll be on your abdomen, different sites. Sometimes maybe six, but mostly only five. Um, all urine will be measured, so um, they will ask you to go to the bathroom. They will have this hat on the uh, commode, and as you can see, they have different levels that they can measure it with. Um, vital signs will be continue to be monitored. You'll stay about two to three hours in the recovery room. However, if you've had a history of sleep apnea, you're going to be staying maybe about three hours, just until anesthesia feels comfortable that you can go down to um, the floor, which is on the second floor. It's called Two West. You'll be transported by a nurse and also a nurse from PACU, and uh, you'll stay there overnight, and um, you'll have a cardiac monitor. It'll look something like this. It will be attached with little stick sticky leads to you. Every surgery patient gets one, and they will also measure your oxygenation with a little finger probe while you're downstairs on to West. So, you'll walk to bed with the assistant of nurses. Um, you'll be on this remote telemetry monitor. Oxygen will be monitored. You may have a nasal cannula that they'll put in or, um, you know, and or a, a pulse oximeter. They're going to monitor your urine output, so you're going to see this hat again on a commode down there. You are going to be walking the hallway with a nurse or aide within the first four hours after surgery. They really want you up and moving. Um, that helps with healing, that helps your body get back into the normal uh, that it was before surgery, so it's very important that you do move around. It also helps get rid of the extra ex residual gas. Sometimes after surgery, you may feel these a gas kind of pains because they insufflate your abdomen. And the pain, you, I mean, the gas usually goes and trapped up in the shoulders. I don't know why that happens, but it seems to have an affinity to that. So walking definitely helps with that. Um, and until, until you feel more comfortable with walking, you'll have someone there with you, and then you can walk up and down the hall by yourself with the IV pole. And you can pass by people as you see them and just keep moving. So, during your stay on to west, your vital signs will be monitored. You'll have ice packs, a skid-free socks, which I have right over here. They'll give you these kind of socks. 
Um, IV fluids will be continued to be administered until discharge. And the next day after surgery, you will start to be able to uh, drink more. In the beginning, on the floor, you'll probably just get ice chips because they really want to limit how much fluid you drink. You will get a lot of your fluid from your IV, but um, we want to take it slow because it's still a little swollen inside after the surgery, so we're just going to give you ice chips in the beginning. The next day, when you start, you will start drinking out of these little cups. Yes, they're very small. And one of these cups, one of these full cups, should take you uh, 20 to 30 minutes to finish. So what does that mean? So what you'll do is the first time you take a sip, you take a sip. You wait about eight to 10 minutes. Then you take another sip, wait about eight to 10 minutes. And then you take another sip, eight to 10 minutes. And if you see on the sheet over here, there is um, a cross off. Each time you have a cup, you will cross it off. And you will have that sheet up with you when you are on, um, in recovery on the second floor. Now, the reason why we want you to go so slow is because if you drink too fast, I like to think of it as a uh, slow moving drain. We've all seen slow moving drains. If you pour the water too fast into that drain, it's gonna just lay on top. If you do, though, go little drips at a time, that water will go through. It's very similar to what will happen after surgery. Now this is only temporary. It's because you know, you're a little swollen inside. You need time for that stomach to heal. So for now, just to limit how we drink, it's going to be little sips from these little cups. Usually it's about three to four days, um, maybe five days at home. We just want you to practice sipping. I don't expect you to go out and, uh, you know, when you, if you do walk around outside, that you're going to sip out of these little cups. It's more of a practice to think about how you're drinking. And it's very important that when you ever do go outside after your surgery, that you always carry water with you, especially during the hot summer months. It's very quick to get dehydration. And if you're taking small sips, you need to have a bottle with you at all times and keep drinking all day long. So, um, the respiratory therapist will set up the CPAP if ordered. Also, they will bring up this uh, incentive spirometer, it's called. And what you do is it helps to expand your lungs after surgery. Since we've had abdominal surgery, it's awful sometimes painful to uh, take in a big deep breath. So that's why we use what's called an incentive spirometer. So what you do is you take a breath and then and you breathe in, and it should raise that little leveler up. So this way it expands your lungs and you know makes you move the secretions. So you'll do 10 breaths an hour while awake, and you'll get to take this home with you. And you should use it while you're at home for at least the first few days after you've had surgery. This way, once your stomach is healing, you, you know, take big deep breaths, um, it should be much better. You don't need to use it as much. Also, um, we're gonna give you medication to deal with your pain if you have any. Um, we use IV Tylenol and with something called IV Caldolor for pain. So those are really great options and they very work very well um, through the IV when we use it through there. Also, every patient gets a pillow, a bariatric pillow. This will be used if you have to cough or um, deep breathe. You can hug it to your abdomen if you have to cough and it helps with splinting some of the pain. It's a nice pillow. It also has information about what your surgery was if you have a sleeve gastrectomy. And um, you can have, it comes with a little pen. You can have people sign it, whatever you like with that. But everybody gets one of these. So. Um, I think this will be helpful a lot, especially on the ride home, because when you hit those potholes, it's good to have this pillow to hug it when you get home. So, we're gonna go over a little bit about what to expect when you go home. So, no alcohol, no carbonated beverages, 
soda and carbonated beverages will, if you drink just like anything, they're very gassy, they will expand and it will cause you a lot of discomfort. So we recommend no carbonated beverages. No gum, because that introduces more air and can make you feel uncomfortable. No straws, no hard candy, no driving until cleared by surgeon, and no driving while taking any kind of narcotic medications. That's illegal and you can't do that. Um, follow our nutritional guidelines. Surgeon, the bariatric PA, and the bariatric RN will review your discharge instructions with you, like how to care for yourself at home, when is your follow-up appointment, um, how to take a shower, all those things we will go over with you. Um, you'll also receive a copy of your medications and um, along with uh, care instructions. And you cannot drive yourself home or take a taxi. And remember when we spoke before, make sure that you have someone stay with you for at least two to three days after surgery. You're not feeling well, it's good to just have someone around for at least two to three days after your surgery. You may shower when you go home. Just make sure that you have, when you go into the shower, have the back of the shower facing the back of you and you can wash your hair and you can soap yourself up but just let it spray over you. Now those little steri strips can get wet, just don't rub that area. Just pat them dry, let all the water soap go over it, and afterwards just pat them dry, okay? My recommendation is to not make the shower too, too hot the first time that you go in, because that can sometimes, after having surgery, you know, it may make you a little bit wobbly. Also, my recommendation is to have somebody with you not in the shower with you, but at home when you take a shower, just in case you feel a little lightheaded or whatever. That's my recommendations for the first time you do take a shower. Just have someone around. Um, walk frequently. Cannot stress that enough. You need to walk, move around. It decreases the chance of blood clots. It also helps with the healing process. Um, make sure you have your protein shakes. You're going to be drinking your protein shakes um, the goal is to get 60 ounces of protein in a day, um, 60 grams of protein in a day, I'm sorry, and to get in 64 ounces of fluid a day. Now, the uh, fluids include the bariatric liquids. It can also include jello. It can include ice pops. It can include soups. Water is the best thing, and that's highly recommended, especially during our summer months. Make sure that you are drinking and making sure that you get that fluid in. Make sure you attend and schedule all follow-up appointments. We will schedule the first ones for post-operative visits, but afterwards make sure you follow up on all the other ones that are scheduled because this is a time we do blood work and we want to watch during your process of your weight loss journey. Uh, do not lift anything more than five to 10 pounds. So at least for six weeks, okay? So no heavy lifting five to 10 pounds. Um, if you have small children, have them come sit next to you, but don't really lift them, okay? Because we wanna care for yourself. This is your time. You need to care for yourself first in order for you to be able to um, get back to your normal self in about five to six weeks. Um, no tub baths, no swimming in hot tubs, no swimming in pools until cleared by your surgeon. Okay, so the important things, what to avoid when you go home. Avoid Advil, Aleve, Motrin, Excedrin, any kind of non-steroidals, unless of course your doctor has prescribed them. Some people have baby aspirin, you should talk with your surgeon and your doctor regarding that. Um, take your vitamins, no gummies. Uh, you could take adult liquid Tylenol, but not the children's Tylenol. So remember that we talked about the little cup if you had to take the children's Tylenol, you'd have to take about two of these full cups to even get any kind of um, relief from any pain. So the adult is the better one to use. If you do use the adult one, my recommendation is only going filling up half of this cup. This is a 30 ml cup, so 15 ml. That contains 500 milligrams of pain relief in the adult liquid Tylenol the 30 would be a thousand milligrams. And we recommend not to exceed 4,000 milligrams in a day. 
and that would include any narcotic pain medication, such as Percocet, which has some Tylenol containing. So my recommendation is just to take the 500, and you can always add more. You can never take away if you add too much. Again, make sure all your medication is liquid or crushed, or the size, as we spoke about, of a Tic Tac. As you can see, that's a larger version, but that is what, you know, it should be smaller than a Tic Tac. Urine. So, especially during these hot summer months, or even other times of year as well, we really have to pay attention to our urine color. And here you see a chart of the urine color. It shows you where you lie if you're hydrated. So the first two to maybe three levels are pretty good, but if you notice the two lower levels, they are, your urine is too dark and you may not be getting enough fluid. If that's the case, you need to try to increase your fluids. If it doesn't change, you need to contact the office because you could easily get dehydrated and we want to try to avoid that at all costs. So it's important, like I said, to keep a water bottle with you, take sips frequently during the day, and um, keep yourself well hydrated. Now, the first urine of the morning may be a little darker, but as the day goes on, it should get lighter. Also to let you know, some vitamins may change the color, but just keep an eye that you're actually frequently going to the bathroom. That'll also, urinating, that'll also make sure that you're getting enough fluids. So, reasons to call your physician. These are just some uh, information we want to give you. It's not necessarily that any of these will ever happen. We just need to you know. So if you have any kind of bleeding coming from the incision sites or anywhere else, you need to call us. Uh, severe increase in abdominal pain and distension. There's a difference between soreness and real pain. If your stomach becomes very painful and you can't move and you feel very uncomfortable, please call us. If you have any shortness of breath, dizziness, or fainting, call us. If you have vomiting, because this can put a little stress on the staple line, you need to call us. If you have extreme weakness and you're just so tired you can't move, please call us. Uh, diarrhea, fever, chills. If you have calf pain, please call us. Uh, if you have any drainage coming from the incision sites, yellow, green, or anything, call us. Difficulty swallowing liquids or fluids, dark urine, and you're unable to increase your fluids, please call us. Often these problems can be discussed over the phone and we, before it becomes serious. And just wanted to let you know again, there is always a surgeon available, um, even after hours. You call the main number where it's listed and uh, the service will get in touch with one of the surgeons on call. So never feel that you can't call someone. Do not wait a weekend, you're on Saturday night, you're not feeling well, and don't wait until Monday when the office opens. You can call at any time. So we're here to support you. So we have the bariatric team. We also have post-op support groups, and we have our own Syosset Bariatric Surgery Facebook group page. It's a closed group. It's only for people that have had surgery, and you can participate in it. We give helpful tin, uh, tips, we give um, recipes, we do support groups. These are really important to attend or to be um, online because um, the uh, evidence does base, evidence-based practice has shown that people that attend support groups have a better recovery period and have a better weight loss journey than those who don't. So we strongly encourage you to either go on our Facebook page or uh, be part of our support groups for either nutrition or for um, the, any of the other groups that we um, host. So follow up, make sure you do your routine visit schedule, monitoring blood work, long-term support groups, Individual counseling is available at any time for whether nutrition, psychology, just if you need to speak to us, please call us. Um, here we have part of our Vivo Health. So um, we, it's called Meds to Vets. So if, when you're scheduled for surgery, 
if you want to participate in our meds to peds program your discharge meds will be available here when you leave the hot before you leave the hospital meaning they will be delivered here and then you can take them home this way you don't have to stop off at a pharmacy to pick them up you can have them all here and that can include your vitamins because we offer it through vivo health the vitamins the adult liquid tylenol um, they also give you a pill crusher if you need to crush any of the pills. Um, they will need to have you um, speak with them because they have to get a copayment. It's all covered by insurance if you have insurance for prescription meds. They will call you a week before your surgery. They need the copayment. They're very small um, and um, you can discuss it with them. I would say 98% of our patients use the Vivo Health. They want to go home with their medications. They don't want to stop anywhere. They want it here, delivered, and we have a pharmacist that goes over all our discharge medication. It has nothing to do with any of your home medication. It's just for discharge. And uh, it's a very good service, and a lot of our patients really like it. So if you have any further questions, please call the office, and we can discuss that with you. Okay, additional items that are available through Vivo Health are the adult liquid Tylenol, the bariatric fusion complete vitamins, uh, which include orange cream, tropical and mixed berried flavors. Um, most people like the orange cream, but you know, it depends on what your palate taste is. And remember, do not start any vitamins until instructed by your surgeon. All right, thank you. And we're excited to be with you and we are here every step of the way.